Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm Peter. And uh, sometimes the weather doesn't cooperate with us. Yep, it gets pretty bad sometimes. And we got a lot of snow and a lot of weird weather all of a sudden. And we thought, you know what, since we couldn't go out and fly our little jet like we wanted to, we'd go ahead and build something we could fly in the snow. So basically the goal was simple. We wanted to see in one business day what we could build and get out in the backyard and have some fun with. Peter, what did you build? I made a hovercraft. This thing's amazing. Okay, I, I made a big snowball, but Peter, okay. why don't you go ahead and show us yours? Oh! As you guys can see, it uh, it's a hovercraft, yes. It does a uh, hover indeed around. I'll just show them the basic principle of how this thing is made. If you got a motor and you got a pusher motor, very brain dead basic simple stuff. It bounces somewhere about right here. But we're gonna remove this top layer. If you wonder why it's wrecked up, I let Stefan drive it and he ran into a pole. <laughs> This thing's been so much fun, everyone has been out there burning the batteries to it. Okay, so you basically have this part right here, which is just two layers of foam stacked onto each other. It looks like that. So that's the exact same piece? Yep, the exact same piece doubled over. There's the hole in it. And now you have the uh, the magic here. This is where the skirt actually comes. Now there's ones that are, are kind of like, rely on the suction of a flat surface. Those ones are really easy to build, but the problem is you can't go over multiple surfaces, like uneven terrain and stuff. That's where the skirt comes into play. Because when you inflate a skirt, like let's say you drive over a Sharpie marker, the skirt actually wraps around it and it keeps the air air pocket bubble in there so it can actually ride over rough surfaces so like rocks and stuff. More of a legit hovercraft. Yep, more, a more legit hovercraft, more multi-purpose. Let's go see what Bob is working on. We're coming here and taking a Eat your heart out. <laughs> so basically here's the uh, the real part of this thing or how it actually works. So it's a simple one piece skirt, just like that. You just fold it over. So is that skirt here. a garbage bag? This is actually just a hefty garbage bag. Hefty garbage bag. Yep. So you basically just trace the outer perimeter of this by about what, three inches or so? About three inches, yeah. We'll pull it up and get a measurement for you guys. So right now, mm -hmm. it looks like we got about Yep. About 17 inches, 18 inches wide. Yep. And it's about from each side of the uh, thing. It's roughly about three inches. You nailed that. So about three inches from the edge of this thing to the outer perimeter. So if you guys build this, you're gonna layer your trash bag around and then cut this out. So you're gonna make some basic PDFs that people can download. It's not gonna be a yep. build video, but people will be able to at least download this at the end. Yep. So you and, get uh, create their own. Yeah. Basically, it's just the basic principle of this. So once you actually do that, you're gonna roll this guy over, cut out the section there, and tape it into this guy. As you can see here, how that works. Basically, here's the actual skirt. It just looks like that. And you guys can make more of these and replace them as you use them. Looks like an O. Basically, yeah, just like a, it's like a tombstone with a with a rectangle cut in the center. <laughs> Fantastic. Yep. So we'll get that out of here. Then we got this guy right here, and this is basically it. You have the kind of like a, the skirt stabilizer air distributor thing, which is just a single piece of foam. And you have two side layers, which is the inner workings. So once again, two the same exact layers, and this is the bottom brace. Mm -hmm. This also gives you a little bit of a, of a difference in, in uh, shape, right? Yep. So, it, so it it's got a little off. bit of a nose. So you just do that, you take your skirt, stick to this side, take that down and then pull this guy back over. 
You just keep taking your tape. I can start on the outside first perimeter. Tape that down in there. Tape this in here. And slowly start taping your nose in. Kind of like you're upholstering something. Yep. And that's just about it. Just leave yeah. a little bit so you have a little room for your air to kind of bubble up in that thing and give you a little bit of an air cushion to run on. Now I noticed that when you when you tape this down, you're kind of moving it back and forth just mm -hmm. to see how it inflates. Yep. You want it to be nice and kind of round all the way around, right? Mm -hmm. And if you if you do mess up, you can just kind of like undo it and then move some move some of the skirt material a little down and tape it back down. And then you just tape this guy back on like that, and then you have a craft. Okay, you ready to do yours? What about your motors? Yeah. Yeah, that's general stuff. All right, long story <laughs> short, what he did is he skirted around his motors and he also wired them together, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just tied into the lift fan and the uh, the thrust motor are on a single motor. I find this is the easiest way to do it if you guys are new to driving like a hovercraft style vehicle. Because if you get in trouble, all you do is you pull the one throttle down and the whole thing settles to the ground and stops. It's like a break. It's a natural yeah, break. Yeah, because a lot of people were telling me, oh, tie it to different uh, throttle channels and stuff. I tried that. It takes a little bit more finesse and talent to get used to that, but if you guys want to, you can actually do that too. Otherwise, you, use, you need a minimum of just two channels, one for throttle, one for steering, and that's all you need. About two years ago, Alex of Island did an episode all around snowballs. Mm. We love our snowballs, and uh, I thought this time we would go ahead and go a little bit bigger. One thing we found out is in our very first uh, attempt at building a big snowball, we used big, uh, I think, three quarter inch Dow mm. foam. It's very brittle in the cold weather and it cracked. It didn't do very well. So in this case, what I wanted to do is I wanted to keep that big size so we had something really big, uh, but also I wanted to make it stronger. So what I did is I drew an airfoil into a conventional simple nut ball. I've never actually seen that before. Has anyone ever done that before? I don't know if they have or not, but it's a real simple idea and it was really easy to do. Nice. Uh, just like Peter, I'm gonna go ahead and throw out some free PDFs as well. You guys can download it. It's pretty self-explanatory and uh, you guys can watch this video and pretty much have an idea how it's made. Uh, but what we also did is we uh, made this top center section. This gave us the girth that we needed to give a lot more strength to the tail. And also when this flipped over, because whenever you have something big, it just catches the wind so much easier, it could take a beating. Uh, along with that, I also built some larger pontoons than normal because nice. what we found out in the first time around was the pontoons kind of on a bigger machine digged in a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. So we made bigger pontoons and then I actually went over, I was originally gonna do differential thrust, mm -hmm. I went over and scavenged out of your box, and God bless you for making this awesome <laughs> motor mount. Uh, what is that for, your circle plane? Uh, it was the circle plane and the multi-wing plane motor mounts. That's just the same thing used over, three times over now. It's it's a, it's a really great, just conventional, simple mm -hmm. uh, simple motor yeah. mount. Uh, thrust angle is really important whenever you have something mm -hmm. where you're pedestaling up. Oftentimes, the higher you go, the more up angle you need uh, in your motor, because if you keep it neutral, it's gonna cantilever. So that's a real good thing. If you guys are ever designing a plane that has like a power pod that's elevated above it, mm -hmm. make sure that you change the thrust angle. It's gonna be the exact opposite. If it's pushing, you're gonna have it actually go down. Basically, uh, the setup is real simple. I used Elevon mixing on my nice. tail and I used a simple rudder. Uh, flying these bigger nutballs three channel, is very difficult. Uh, using Elevons is a way to go uh, because you oftentimes got a little bit more bank control uh, than the rudder will give you. One of my hopes with the airfoil design on the nutball is to give us a little bit better tendencies when you get bigger and also take away some of that torque that you get uh, when you're flying big foam monsters. It looked pretty good. I'd ride in it if it's big enough. <laughs> it worked out pretty good. You know, balance is always kind of temperamental when you have these planes, mm -hmm. uh, but you can shift the battery around really easy and uh, basically make it fly the way you want to. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that is insane. So one thing that we really do a lot is we love using foam board. Mm -hmm. We love using simple common materials, but there is a reality check, and that is that water and moisture just simply mm -hmm. don't like this stuff, yep. do they? Yeah, so this wasn't a total day of just playing around. We actually were doing research here. Why don't you tell us about the foam? We're partnering with the great folks at Adams Ready Board, and they are making up a water-resistant foam board for us. And if you guys have been watching our periscopes and some of our Facebook leaks, you're gonna know that we have a water-resistant foam board coming out. And it's actually craft brown. But what we did want to see is if we could get a white waterproof or water-resistant foam board. And this is what they sent us. Now, it's phenomenal. It's way better than the original uh, craft simple white paper, uh, but it's a little bit heavier. And unfortunately, when water gets on the edge, it started peeling up. Yep. What we noticed about the brown that we ultimately chose and that they're actually manufacturing for us right now is mm. the stuff doesn't peel up. Yep. It's high, It's more. It's much more resistant than this stuff. Yeah. Still in, in long-term water soaking, it will still come off, but it's very, very harder to go off, unlike this stuff. This stuff will come off after a bit of soaking. You had a, uh, a when we tested the, the brown, you had a, uh, was it the guinea pig? Yep, the guinea pig. And how many hours did you have that sitting out in the rain? I left it about three hours in the storm and then proceeded to fly it. 
I noticed in some things where it was painted, it held up a lot better than if, when it was unpainted. But overall, it was, it was still a flyable, usable airframe. So one thing safe to say is in the near future, we're gonna have a water resistant foam board. It's gonna be uh, a flight test foam, uh, water resistant. Uh, it's gonna be craft brown. But this stuff is amazing. And like we mentioned earlier in the videos, we want you guys to be able to take what we learned and run with it. So we're gonna have both the PDF plans for your awesome hovercraft. Mm -hmm. I really hope, honestly, with FT STEM coming out, yep. this is a great winter project for people to use indoors. So I hope there's a speedboat kit of that eventually. Yeah, if you guys definitely want it, definitely let me know. I mean, I can work on more designs, refining it, making it better, faster, easier to build, and maybe even more refined as far as the skirt goes and maybe even different materials. Very cool. And if you guys wanna build the monster snowball with the airfoil, we'll have PDF plans down for that as well.